Hey everyone, welcome to the Wild and Uncut podcast brought to you by Ruger. I'm your host, Christy Titus. Thank you for tuning in. The line is going hot, so let's go full send on this episode. Since 1949, Ruger has embodied the spirit of hunting in America. Ruger firearms are built to deliver the reliable and accurate performance that seasoned veterans demand and new hunters can trust. At Ruger, we believe that hunting is about more than just the thrill of the chase. It's about the freedom and opportunity that come with it. This is our heritage, and this is Ruger. Everybody, thank you for joining us for this episode of the Wild and Uncut Podcast. I'm with two of my favorite humans. Number one, to my right, Mr. Yogi Roush, my husband. number one this time. Yeah, well. I was number one last time. (laughs) I have to flip a coin, okay? (laughs) And then to my left is my other favorite human, Mr. Nick Stello, Crooked Canyon Productions. Da, da, da. The man that is tasked with the impossible job of trying to make me look good. Yeah. Hoof. I said trying. It's a lot easier now that you have enough money in the world for that. Mm. Yogi does help, yeah. Well, I married him for his good looks, so. Mm -hmm. Not right now. (laughs) Coming out of the bush. (laughs) Yeah, we both have mullets after this hunt. (laughs) Yeah, well, we all have worse than that. So we literally just spent um, six days no showering total. Right? Yeah. It's not bad. That's not bad. Not bad. But five days packed into the backcountry. We took the mules um, for Yogi and I's. Uh, first Wyoming hunting adventure as, well, we hunted as non-residents, but technically this is our home state now. Yes. So it was pretty fun. It was. Epic adventure. And successful. And poor Nick. Nick is the guy that always gets stuck doing stuff with me where I call him. I'm like, hey, Nick, I have this idea. What do you think? And you always do it. And I'm still stupid. trying to figure out why. <laughs> yeah, we don't know if he's desperate for work or if it's just stupid. No. <laughs> just was a little gap in my schedule I could make work, and I very much regret it. <laughs> <laughs> after how many why days did, did you this? realize? Actually, after? it wasn't that bad. Yogi got the worst of it because, he had to walk. as you'll see in some of the footage, he is not there. Yeah, <laughs> <'Cause> no, he's <laughs> walking. <laughs> he's walking. Well, so. yeah, we had four animals to pack three of us and all the gear in. And animals and, out. And animals out. Yeah. So <laughs> I was walking. Yeah. Most N- of the time. Nick and I rode. Uh, Hank and Otis packed. And uh, yeah, it was pretty nice. And Yogi packed. And Yogi <laughs> packed. <laughs> That's fun. Sorry, husband. But this was a cool trip because, you know, we we did some local research. We found a spot we wanted to go to logistically have never been there had no idea if there'd be feed for the animals if we would find water because if you guys look behind us this is this is where um, our mules live but it's basically the same, the same thing yeah. that we just hunted it's the same train same it's yeah, it's same you know wyoming yeah. uh it's like the same mm-hmm. and like it's the desert there's no water there's nothing out here and it's pretty rough it look like you think about wyoming you think it's flat it's not flat no. no, it looks flat out here too. Well, flat. some places are a little flatter, but this part right. of Wyoming is not no that much. No, like there's even this country behind us, it looks rugged, but then you get into it and it's even worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It looks rugged and then you hike in it and then you're like, wow, this is really rough. Actually, so when where we went was was so rough that like night one, man, I was stressing. Like I feel I, like I have the responsibility of all the animals on me and taking care of everyone and all these things and making sure they're all fed. And I have a very underweight elderly mule. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, on like, top of it all, we're packing in with elderly animals. <laughs> that I have to pack their food. F- I have to pack my f- the food in for Hank because he is so old that he can't just like eat grass and sustain his weight. So he has to have like liquidized alfalfa pellets and... Yeah, it's a lot, like, Mm -hmm. to take on. Mentally, for me, I think this is one of the more stressful hunts 
that I've done, like, for sure. Yeah. Like, I didn't even feel like eating some nights. I was like, and then just, yeah, stress. Yeah. Well, and then we were, then we were pressed for time, too. We only had two full days, really. And we had no idea where we were going and if there was water or. Yeah, yeah well, we had a little bit of an idea. Know, we had a direction. Yeah. yeah. Where we were going, kind of. You know, I'd been in there a few miles scouting a couple months ago. But you found no water. N- so that was well, stressful. Remember, I said I saw that water tank way yeah. across, but there was no guarantee that was going to be water no. in there. But then a friend of ours told us that there's like an unwritten law kind of, and I don't know if that's true or not, but that the ranchers that are allowed to graze BLM uh, out there are supposed to leave the stock tanks that they have for their cattle filled with water until the hunting season's over. So people with mules or horses or whatever that pack in have water. Yeah, and then one of the people <coughs> told us also that some of those ranchers fence off those tanks so mm-hmm. you can't use them. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's really like you're totally going into an unknown where you could really get in serious trouble with your oh, livestock. Yeah. Like yeah. if you get all the way in there, yeah, you eight, find ten out miles there's back no water. For the first stretch and there's mm-hmm. no water. Yeah. That's that's a bad deal for things that you care about, like animals and yourself. Yeah. And then we were lucky with the weather in one way that it didn't go bad, you know, like with rain or snow because it was actually too hot during the day yeah. but th- in a way that was good we didn't get any bad weather so yeah. because it can get really muddy and you can get stuck in there in a snowstorm or whatever there's no way i'd want to do the route we took in the rain or snow mm. yeah like, get pretty snotty oh well, that that mud is going to be like cake mm-hmm. and s- yeah. and gumbo the meals would be a couple inches taller by the time they got yeah. out literally yeah like that would be <laughs> bad they'd be sliding you you'd you'd risk breaking legs and stuff i feel like like it could be potentially like a bad deal you probably get flash floods in there, too, looking at all those washouts and yeah, stuff. 100%. Oh yeah, 100 If it yeah. rains hard. So that was good. That we didn't get any of that. We had a dry week. Um, it made the hunting harder during the day because everything was just moving last hour of daylight. It was the same as in Oregon. Yeah. You had the first hour, <laughs> and a half, hour and a yeah. half of daylight and the last 45 minutes or hour mm-hmm. of before yeah. dark that was it yeah. the rest of the day you just kind of sit around and yeah. do nothing and we're like in between rut periods too like the elk are not rutting anymore yeah. the mule are not quite rutting yet <laughs> so it's like that the dead worst time, time right yeah. in between yeah. there but i think we did really good for mm-hmm. two days in the unknown country oh we did really good. we yeah. saw a lot of animals um and explored some beautiful country yeah uh walked a little bit and shot some nice animals That's yeah good I felt like Dora the Explorer <laughs> going out there in uncharted land. <laughs> yeah, I mean, hunters. for just poking in the first valley, that first night, we're like, okay, there's elk, there's deer, there's elk over here, there's more yeah. deer over here. Mm-hmm. And we're like, okay, we could pull it off. And yeah. Two full days of hunting is all yeah. we had. Yeah. Well, it's a good thing we didn't shoot an elk, though, <laughs> because we would have had to make two trips. Yeah. Like, it wouldn't have been a one-tripper. We would have had to pack in and out twice. Yeah. Like, there would have been no way. We could have. Well, we could have packed an elk out. You would have had to walk, too. Yeah, but we were maxed out. You can't put a whole elk on my tiny little Arabian. No, <laughs> like, no, no. No, I'm saying. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, no. What I meant put was more weight on Otis. if we had <laughs> shot an elk instead of the two mule deer. Oh, yeah. Like, well, one yeah, elk. yeah, yeah. We could have yeah, done yeah, that. We could have packed an elk three out. three animals, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. And been the fine. Yeah, yeah. same. But, yeah, it was, uh, that was a lot of fun. Full exploration. Uh, very successful. Um, we both got deer on the last day. Double whammy. Boom. That was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. It was a full day. Yours got shot in the morning. Packed it to camp. Yeah. Had to go back, get mules. Yogi skinned it. We went back, got it, loaded it, got back to camp. Went back back out. Got back to Yogi. He had a deer spot. It went up, killed that one. Yeah. And then the next morning. Yeah. Got it that. Then went back again the next morning. And then right all the way out. I'll do that. Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. It was a hefty it's a two good days. 24 hours. Yeah. It, was a, it was a great 24 hours. But I didn't get a lot of sleep because in the meantime, like, the mules are standing around all day long while we're hunting or doing whatever. So at night, I'm getting up every three hours so I can rotate heads, turning them loose so they can feed. Yeah, that was pretty annoying because they keep waking me up. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even get the benefit of it because you had to walk. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Not me. <laughs> I rode... I don't know, twice maybe on this trip. Yeah, but you don't like Ruby. You don't like Rudy riding Ruby. I liked her at the end, riding that last little hill up towards the truck. Yeah, he always rides after <laughs> at the end when she's when she, tired. When she smoked a little bit, yeah. yeah. She's too fidgety. I don't like that. Yeah. She's a goer. She's mm. strong. Like, Nick, you're a big guy. Yeah, 
She packed me no problem. Oh, and we went up some. We I had to slow down the whole time. Yeah. You're like, Nick, went... slow down. Nick, slow down. Nick, slow down. Don't run up the hill. Don't. <laughs> she was literally trying to run up these run up hills. Yeah, and I'm like, ass. no, I like I have a pack string behind me and my horse is 20 years <laughs> old. He does not want to run up a hill. Hank's 26. He don't want to run up the hill. Otis. Yeah, she was fun. Could run up a hill, but he's too big to run. Yeah. Like nobody wants to run except Ruby. <laughs> yep. Yeah, if it was just you and Ruby going in, you could be back where we oh. were in like two hours or less. Less. She would just smoke, smoke in through there. it. Yeah. yeah. She's so fast. Well, if you had Ruby and then just leading Otis, maybe the yeah. two of them could, could pile through yeah, there. Yeah, really you'd be fast. a lot faster. Yeah, those two are. Really but Hank, fast. Hank did really well. I mean, even with that heavy load coming out, he wasn't. Yeah. He wasn't hurting or nothing. Senior citizen Hank. He is so old. <laughs> Here he comes. He's but the thing is, oh, he's shit. got the experience, you know? He doesn't, you he know, might he make knows. an appearance. He might. <laughs> yeah, he might photobomb us. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know, maybe not. But um yeah, no, he is an old man and but it was aw- I was super happy because um like I've done one other pack trip without my dad. And I was like I'm never doing this again cuz I was solo mm-hmm. with the mules and that was that was dumb cuz it was really hard doing it 100% by myself. You though. and the three others? Just me and the mules and yeah. no other humans. Yes. It, That's scary it, even. I mean, what what if shit Oh, happened? no. Here he comes. <laughs> Hello, Hank. Hi, Hank. Uh, yeah, knock three. over Yogi's camera now. Yeah, don't <laughs> knock over the cameras. But, yeah, three people, and it was way too much. And uh, Or, no, three people. Three mules and me. It was way too much. And, um, oh, gosh. Oh, he's going to do it. He's going to come over. Oh, yeah. He's going to step on all my cords. <laughs> he's like, I don't want it. <laughs> So for those of you listening that This can't is the see senior this, citizen. My mule Hank, the little old man, is now trying to eat this pathetic oh, yeah. dried out grass out and of his like, hand. Oh, this <laughs> he's sucks. like, This is horrible. Yeah. <laughs> he spit it he out. Spits it out. <laughs> <laughs> he has no teeth, he can't even chew it if he wanted to. Mm. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so I decided I'd never do that again and then this time this was the first time I did like a pack no, hunting trip we're without not my eating dad. the jacket. Get Oh, you call him over here and then hit him. <laughs> What's wrong with you, Nick? You should be embarrassed right now in a shame. No. Hey, that's my jacket. That's yeah, Yogi's jacket. That's what happened Let last time. <laughs> <laughs> Let him eat it. Come here, Boo. Come here. I love you. Come mm-hmm. here. Come here. Yeah. No, he did really well on this trip. I mean, but again, this summer, he, I rode him for five hours here in the mountains. There's no issues. Yeah. No. I rode the whole, pretty much the whole trip. Yeah. He's just old and he's having a hard time keeping weight on. So I try right. to baby him a little. But he's got the experience of, of his age, right? He doesn't yeah. do anything that he doesn't need to. No. Like the other ones are running up the hill and doing and this fidgeting. and fidgeting. Yeah. And he's just chilling. Yeah. He doesn't try to waste energy. I like him because he's so calm. It's nice. Yeah. You like riding him. He's oh, a yeah. good boy. I like Hank. So the they all did good though. So there was... An unknown that was really big is, you know, when you have a new mule, Ruby, and you have dead animals on the ground. Like. And blood on your and hands. And blood. And Guts. Stinky, rutted mule deer. <laughs> yeah. And you're mounting dead heads on the backs of other mules. And, th- you know, they're walking around with animal heads on them and meat in their panniers. And, like, some animals freak out and mm-hmm. lose it over that. And she was, man, she was rock solid. No problem. All of them were flawless. She's um, better than expected. Yeah. She's more worried yeah. about shiny objects, I think. She's Anything got, in your hand is yeah, what freaks like her out. Shiny a lens, metal a stuff. Camera, yeah, yeah. Handing a camera. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> she didn't like handing that. a water bottle. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, she's had one thrown at her, so that's probably yeah. why. <laughs> yeah, Yogi abusing mm. her at night. And see, this goes back to my husband and Nick now of both of them abusing my animals. I'm no. sure. I'm saving <laughs> Yogi's jacket. Not abusing her. <laughs> He's just teaching them not to freaking be impatient, you know. Says the guy who goes 24 hours a day. Actually, Nick and I had this conversation that Ruby actually is the perfect mule for you because you never slow down. Like, you are 24-7, you know, going, going, going. And you have, like, these to-do lists for me that are never-ending, I swear to God. Yeah, well, you need to do something. <laughs> like, well, this I do morning, some... Nick, how many things did I get told to do this morning? <laughs> really? Well, what was I doing? Well, he's your manager, basically. <laughs> <laughs> what was I doing? Yeah, t- wait, telling me what to do. Right. I do one <laughs> thing, you do one thing. It's yeah. <laughs> Yogi does one, you do two. Yogi does one. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you just haven't figured that out yet. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I was like, wife, do this. Wife, do that. Yeah. The other day, you really got me when you were spotting a deer, and you're like, woman, it's right there. I wanted to just punch you right in your mouth. <laughs> like, I didn't remember like, saying that. Yeah, you did. I was like, oh. <laughs> See, you should have punched him. <laughs> I'm going to punch remember. you in your teeth. Yeah, I, should, I was going to well, treat what, you like the mules. What do you want me to say? Next wife, thing. it's right there. Yeah, like nice, not like woman. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like so close. It was mm. not so close. It was bedded. <laughs> 500 yards away. <laughs> 500 yards away. Well, man, it's underneath that same flash. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, husband. <laughs> I'm going to treat you like the donkeys. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, 500 yards away, that was a chip shop, at least for you, Yogi. 450. Your deer was 450. 450 and mm-hmm. Christy had a little bit of a poke, too. I had a poke. 695 or something. Yeah. Something mm-hmm. it was. Yeah. That's yeah. the furthest you've... Ever hunted. Yeah. Because yeah. your book cliffs one was what well, six fifty? Yeah, yeah six fifty. So a little bit yeah. more there. A little bit farther than that. Yeah. I don't I don't prefer to shoot obviously that far. Yeah. Um But that type of terrain you have to And where yeah. they were going we would have never caught no, them. No, we yeah. and yeah, we No, they to, were gonna go over the top. Yeah. It was, that or no, it was an hour never last morning yeah. and but you, I honestly don't like them. I also, I also don't like them too close either. Oh, yeah. There's like to me like this comfortable yeah, like space. Four hundred, like, like perfect. Three, four, 400, yeah. three to four hundred <laughs> yards. I'm like, you're going down. But I like the, this. But Good. that's the thing, and I that can kind get away of, with a lot. A lot, exactly. Yeah. That kind of terrain, most of the shots will be four to five hundred. Yeah, just because yeah. that's the width of the canyon. Yeah, yeah. and that's where you spot them because you glass across normally. Yeah. <coughs> so it's big country it's really deceiving because mm-hmm. it's very deceiving we would be like oh yeah we're just gonna walk over there and 45 minutes later we're still walking over there yeah it was oh. you know yeah they're all these little slot canyons that look flat but then the yeah the, the in between them is just two sheer peaks yep. but the nice thing about it out there though like coming from oregon it's so rocky you know like yeah, oregon nice, uh, oregon's yeah. like rough rocky country there's not a lot of rocks out here Mm-mm. it's really interesting there's a lot of gumboy mud yeah. but there's not the rock here like my dad was imagining it being rough and rocky when i say rough i mean it's just like steep mm-hmm. steep rocky yeah just there is some rocks like but chill, it's not yeah. like it's no, not it like easy. if you matter like imagine eastern oregon and the sagebrush no. the sagebrush is growing in like boulder fields they, it's just not that way here it's yeah. it's just well, even this, the rock, some of the rock you have in these hills is more like a... Powder rock. Limestone-y, kind of, it breaks apart way easier yeah. when you walk on it. Yeah. Which is why when it rains, it's bad it's news. Gumbo. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, like get your car stuck. That's why everybody that lives in Wyoming, that, that they drive a truck, they're all like browned on the <laughs> sides of them. I haven't washed my truck <laughs> once since we moved here. No, nor have There's I. There's no point. Like yeah. you drive dirt roads all the time and then it <laughs> rains and you know. Probably yeah. it's going to snow tomorrow. I know. That's crazy. So it's 80 degrees <laughs> when we're hunting. And tomorrow they're expecting three to six inches of snow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's crazy. And we're looking at thunderclouds right now. Yeah, it's coming in. That are crazy. Yeah. But Nick, you did some stellar photography. Stello, stellar. Get it? Yeah. Wank, wank. That would have been a good business name, but. <laughs> <laughs> stellar Productions. <laughs> uh, yeah, mm. you did. A, like that. Some of those photos you took were awesome. And, um specifically the one of the Cabela's tent mm-hmm. with the Milky, Milky Way, Way yeah. and the stars. It was, this was probably one of the first trips that I've actually sat outside with my hunting party and laid outside and just looked at the sky. Yeah. We did no headlamps on. Yeah. Things. It was beautiful. Yeah. It got a little awkward when we all three laid together, but. Yeah. <laughs> Why? <laughs> oh, awkward, sorry. Just me. Not awkward <laughs> yeah, for That's me. just you. I don't know. <laughs> we really were fine. Oh, never mind. Yeah. Scratch, edit that out. I guess it was just fine. We <laughs> also shared a tent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and let me tell you, it smelled like what monkeys played yeah, around in there. It was tent, so yeah. stinky. That's, I've smelled the worst tents this year than almost ever. Cause like we were talking about that. You and I have done so many backpack trips. Mm-hmm. We've never shared a tent really no. apart from, I think once with my dad. Yeah. Well the big, yeah. If it's like a the big, big trip, haul, tent. never yeah. a two man tent. No, 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 no. And Yogi and I shared that two man tent last week in Oregon and it was stinky. And then <laughs> like you walked into our tent, even though it was this giant stand up Cabela's outfitter, like six man yeah. tent. I unzipped the tent on the last day, and I was like, oh, yeah, <laughs> like, this is nice. It's just enough work where you can be sweaty and smell yourself and not like a sheep hunt where you're like, you've sweated so much that you can't smell yourself yeah, after three yeah, days. Yeah. It just goes away. This is like, 
you do some work, not a ton, still enough to like smell everyone around you and yourself. The so. sheep hunts, though, um, they're colder usually. I True, feel like, I guess and that you could don't be, yeah. maybe. I feel like maybe you don't get as stinky because. Well, you get stinky. You just can't smell it. Remember the I pilot always. My clothes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The pilot always goes, you can tell how hard the sheep hunt is from the client by how bad they smell, they smell. when they come in. Yeah. yeah. But you don't smell yourself. And then, you know, that was what really got me one year is because the pilot said I was one of the worst smelling ones. And I was <laughs> really <laughs> offended by that. I'm like, wait a second. I mean, this guy over here, like I took dead downwind wipes in and I'm yeah. like trying to be like humane about myself. And this dude over here didn't brush his teeth for 12 yeah. days and you're going to tell me he smelled better than me? That's insulting. Not me, by the way. Not me. She's <laughs> yeah. just saying this dude. I'm just saying this yeah. dude. Like, I, I'm just <laughs> like, not literally Yogi. Yeah. But, I mean, like, another guy on the trip. Uh-huh. Like, how <laughs> is that possible? Well, it's when the fresh nose. I won't name the trip or the people. But no. when we got to a certain camp and we, we were fresh hunters, but they had never come up the mountain. The guides hadn't. Yeah. And we got there and I almost threw up that first morning. We were eating That person breakfast, smelled so bad. And I was downwind of them and I'm like... Oh, oh my god! <laughs> and then after three days, you smell like that. You never. You, you don't even notice tell. it anymore. Yeah. yeah, you don't even yeah, notice it. That person it. had no idea they smelled that like that. That person did not. They didn't even want to rush in to like have a shower. They're no. like, I'm good. Well, and the then, thing is, yeah. you're like, no, actually, you're not. I, th- I think it's like a, a, there's like a five day cutoff line. You know, where yeah. you, after that, doesn't matter anymore. Right. 100%. We never really got to that on this trip. The no. Oregon no. one we did. Oh, we went 10. No, we mm-hmm. went 11 days without a shower. The Oregon one, it was bad at the end. Yeah. Because it was also 80 degrees and we were hiking yeah. dark before daylight to after dark. And yeah. yeah, it was pretty sweaty. And then you lay in a mummy sleeping bag because it gets cold at night and it's all just simmers in there. It's like mm-hmm. <laughs> fermented. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anybody want to go green, hunting? A green glow. <laughs> <laughs> a northern lights glow in the tent. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's not the northern mm. lights it's a tent it's fine mm. it's radon gas yeah. coming out of it or whatever it is. but that was pretty speaking of the northern lights like that night sky was pretty sweet there yeah, with the Milky Way. that's the best part about those trips is when mm. you can get away from city lights I mean, and everything. way way out you know like you're way out 20 30 minutes but when you can get hours mm. and hours and hours away from city lights no light the, pollution, no light pollution yeah. and time it where there's not a big moon which there wasn't no you know, that it was beautiful. That was one of my better Milky Way photos. And sure. we didn't have much for cloud cover until no. the day we rode out. Which, which was, was yeah. perfect. Yeah, because yeah, it would have been really hot <laughs> coming out. We would have roasted out. And it was yeah. good for the meat, too. I mean, we mm-hmm. we had to hang it overnight, you know, yeah. and it, it was cool. Yeah, my, was, deer, my deer hung overnight, and then yours was gutted on the mountain overnight, and we packed yeah, it up. We shade, boned yeah. it. Yeah. We boned it and packed We boned out both deer and yeah. packed them out. And then my we, deer was over 130 pounds uh, boned. Deer. It was enormous. Yeah, he was a toad. That thing's neck was bigger around than my body. Yeah, he like, was rutting it was way early. So yeah. big, mm-hmm. huge deer. He was rutting hard because yeah. he was rubbing that bush the night before. Yeah, he killed him, and he was pushing a little two point around away from some does, and he wasn't having none of yeah. that stuff. Speaking of two points, trophy two point hunter. Yeah, yeah. Yogi, the whole time, the entire yeah, time he didn't we give were a shit about a four point. He wants a big fork. <laughs> the whole time we're driving there, he's like, "I'm gonna shoot," because he was scouting this summer and saw a big fork and horn. He's like, "I'm gonna shoot that big fork and horn," and he's like, "I'm gonna do a post." He's like, "Thank you, Wyoming, and you're welcome, Wyoming." <laughs> and he had like this whole social media post <laughs> planned out in his mind. And what's he shoot? A big fork and horn. Big fork and horn with yeah. brows. Yeah. With brows, yeah. See too many of those Did you brows. measure how wide that thing is? No, I didn't. But he's he's big. He's yeah. and heavy too. Mm-hmm. He's not as wide as yours. I think yours we got to twenty seven. Tw- yeah, twenty seven. Um, I think this one's probably about. 20. But if my deer would have been a four point, he'd have been one hundred and eighty inch four point. Yeah. It was massive. Yeah, mine's just a big two point, and he's got good age to him. Also, yeah. I think he's probably six years old. Yours is probably eight already. He's an old deer. Old deer. Really old. You're deer. welcome, Wyoming. We both shot management yeah. deer for you. Okay. <laughs> we backed in ten miles. <laughs> but I mean, to shoot shoot management th- deer. The three point and a fork and horn. <laughs> but I mean the, I mean that's your deer, is probably the best management deer you can shoot like that oh, yeah. anybody. Because oh, yeah. he was going to breed some does. Oh, sure. he was. Oh, yeah. 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 He was aggressive and he was big enough. He would push yeah. anything out out of there. And those three points, they can mess some deer up. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He was a great deer though. Like as soon as you saw him, like when we walked up to him. He looked like a little raghorn bull. He was so big, mm-hmm. uh, body-wise, and his antlers looked huge. And 
I wasn't disappointed at all in taking them. I'd rather shoot a deer like that than a young 120 inch four by four. Right. You know, no, you're 115. Well, and and he got, you know, he had the character on the basis of the knobby stuff and yeah. the little drop extra. Time. He did have a little drop yeah. kicker. <laughs> yeah. Three by three, three by four with a drop. With yeah. a drop. <laughs> no. All one no. inch of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was an awesome deer to shoot. I yeah, mean, and really especially good. that we saw him the night before yeah. and kind of figured out where he was living and then... Got well, every day in that drainage, we saw a different <laughs> buck, though. Yeah, but I mean. it's because it's building up towards the rut and there's lots of does in there, right? Yeah. So they're staging up for in a week or two when they really start... Kicking off. And this, <laughs> I don't know, we were talking about it, this old buck that you killed, he might have been like, okay... I'm going to get a head start on this, uh, on this before those young studs come in and, and I have to work too much. I'm just going to start and see <laughs> yeah. what does are ready. So he just was working them. <laughs> he was. <laughs> it's funny. And we got a little lucky that they w- then went the way they, they did. did in the end, you know, because yeah. otherwise we wouldn't have been able to get them. No, if they um, would have kept on the path I thought they were going, it would have been over. Yeah. Yeah. Because we weren't even looking at them. We were like, okay, they're done. And then yeah. all of a sudden, boom. Oh, they, they went around the ridge. They're, yeah. We're good. Yeah. 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 No, it's, it was cool. It was a cool day. It was yeah, a great day. Double header on the last day of the season. That's good. Mm-hmm. And now we have so much meat. Yeah, but you know what? I'm going to take some of it to, to attack of it next year. There you go. And team up with Ty again, I think, and do like a cook-off or something. And yep. bring some meat patties or do taco meat or something. I don't know. I haven't decided yeah, yet. We'll good. do, uh, ta- you know, tacos mm-hmm. or... He brings some bison and you bring yeah, some game. Yeah, it'd be fun. I think, I think it'd be a good time. Um mm-hmm. I I also like with my Oregon deer I donated obviously half to Robbie but um, my parents employees you know they didn't they're new Wyoming residents they didn't get to hunt this year so I was gonna offer them up some meat and you know just Maybe just you can share in the for bounty. some ham for some pork again because they do that sometimes yeah I'm I'm okay I'd rather just go to the grocery store and get pig <laughs> <laughs> I like shooting wild pig yeah we'll the wild pigs that, that we've too. shot I love the wild pig mm-hmm. but I don't love like when I buy like a fair pig or something i don't know they i haven't had good experience with enough that. chemicals in them. <laughs> I, <laughs> like, I don't know have, i haven't really the need fair, some gmo the stuff the fair going. the fair pigs though i don't know they feed them something different yeah, it's kind of like the wild turkeys too when you shoot a turkey yeah oh yeah no. you know, it's not the same no it's not the same no matter where you pursue the wild, never leave home without Onyx Hunt. Onyx gives hunters the confidence to apply and draw tags in areas they've never set foot in, extending hunting seasons and opportunities. Always know where you stand with public and private land layers, unit boundaries, and more. Onyx can even be downloaded directly to your phone for use when you don't have service. Wherever you pursue the wild, hunt with Onyx. What do we have in the freezer now? Like from this year, you've got axes. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was good. You've got. I know, it was you good. still. We still have the Bookcliffs mule deer. I don't let Yogi eat the axis deer. <laughs> just yeah. me. Let me just I tell get you. To eat. <laughs> Who's the real number one? I get to eat the axis deer. How this works <laughs> is he eats the Utah mule deer. And the liver and all the other. Crap and I eat tried. the axis deer. Okay, he does not get the axis deer, so he also gets to eat these mule deer, and I will get the white tail. <laughs> yeah, you, that's fine. I don't mind. But what do we have? We have yeah, the Yeah, we axis. cooked kidneys the other night. What was yeah, that? that was from that the mule deer? That was from Oregon, the yeah, mule Oregon deer. mule deer. Yeah. Should've you ate the fat Oregon. and you ate the... Kidneys. Kidney fat and all the fat. And, and that I, was apparently the good kidney taste. I don't know. I was smelling well, the, that and I, I cooked <laughs> See, that the thing and is, I was like, I can't do I that. Ate it. I ate the kidneys with the kidney fat, fried in the kidney fat, just that. <clears throat> and there was nothing with it, right? So normally what I do is I, I fry it up like that. <coughs> butter, cream sauce, some mustard in there, some onion, and some apple slices. Well, yeah, it's you can put anything good. in that sauce and make it taste good. No wonder. It's pretty good. We didn't have any or of those ingredients. Chick fil A sauce. Yeah. Chick- <laughs> so that was. So Nick has never had Chick fil A sauce. No, at I home. had it my last hunt in New Mexico. Okay, well, first time. Yeah. But once I saw you had it, then. Well, welcome yeah. to the <laughs> new. <laughs> 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 welcome to the new decade. Yeah. yeah. Chick fil A sauce is like. Uh, like I can't I mean once yeah. you put it out like you're mm. this is not a paid sponsorship this is just something you need to do for your mental health yeah. <laughs> just go get it <laughs> get a tube of <laughs> it makes, it makes your life better Walmart it is delicious <laughs> it is so good so good but yeah. we do have a lot but we have a little bit of wild boar left uh-huh. not from much. Uh, California last yeah. year and we need to do a pig hunt next year just just to, I like the we wild will. boar because I like making pulled yeah. pork and then so. we're going we have the half of the Oregon mule deer your Kansas whitetail, and then two Wyoming deer now, mule yep. deer. And then we still 
have an elk tag and two white-tailed deer, three white-tailed deer to nice. do this year. Swing! <laughs> Here comes a new freezer. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that. We mm-hmm. have to get one. I've been telling we you the whole time. We can't eat that much. Usually I donate, you yeah. know, some meat to people. We still need a new freezer. Because there's a lot of people that... <laughs> You know, would love to have wild game. Like, yeah. we have this old man as a neighbor. I, we should take him some meat. Like, he has a wife who yeah. he's, like, taking care of full mm-hmm. time. And, yeah, you should. You know, just take him something to be nice. Yeah, you know, like, some. I like doing that for Give people. Give your parents some. Yeah, like, little care packages your, for people. Your parents' employees get mm-hmm. some. And yeah. No, my parents don't need any. My dad is an elk. We can make... Maybe we can swap him some. Yeah, don't, <laughs> don't bet on it. I don't yeah, think my no dad's going to give that up. For a white tail, he probably would, not for a mule deer. No, he ain't going to give it up. That's <laughs> his pride and joy. Yeah. Every time he ser- like people come over, he's like, we're having oak steak. <laughs> that's his, <laughs> his pride and joy. He's happy about it. Yeah. And that's what you should be as a hunter. That's part of the that's part of the process of sharing and the bounty of the harvest mm-hmm. and and. Uh, and in reliving the memory of hunting over a meal. I think that's uh, what, sure, you yeah. know, a super impactful part of hunting and mm-hmm. how you can reach people that might not be hunters or on the fence mm-hmm. about hunting yeah. um, or even non-hunters completely, yeah. you know. I love just not telling anyone what it is. And... Surprise meat. Yeah, I call it. <laughs> it's so good. Oh, I love Nick's surprise meat. <laughs> <Yeah>. It's so <laughs> good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I tell him afterwards, Christy. <laughs> I do that too. I made you I blush. Like I made you it? blush. <laughs> You're totally blushing. What I was... say surprise meat and he gets all freaked out. My cheeks are already red, okay? I've been sunburned for the last five days straight. My white Norwegian ass up there. <laughs> I know. you. Nor- we went floating on the river one time with Nick. Shut it. And he wore cowboy boots, <laughs> black leggings, a long sleeve black yeah. shirt, and a cowboy hat. Yeah, what else do you wear? I don't wear a long sleeve shirt. <laughs> like today. nothing? You had a long sleeve black I don't shirt. I normally wear a nice flannel cutoff like that. <laughs> <laughs> Styling. No, you were like layered up like you were <laughs> scuba diving or something. <laughs> scuba Steve over <laughs> here. I don't wear shorts. <coughs> sorry, jeans I just. 24 7. China flu, sorry. Hmm. Let's be real. No, you had <laughs> yeah. the China flu this week. Yeah, that was not my Some most quiet cough hunt going I've ever been in my entire life. That was a horrible time to have. Which that. is why we couldn't get any closer, okay? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I had to shoot at 400 because my cough. Luckily, yeah. I'm with people I know, so it's very understanding. Because if it was e- a new client, it would have really sucked. I didn't I even notice, to be honest with you. Well, you're loud already, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Like you're already a loud mouth, so what does it matter? <laughs> That's not as loud as being around my dad. Be like, <laughs> shh, quiet, quiet. Are you sick? Get the fuck out of here. And here's me, I run into camp. Ponies! <laughs> yeah. Hello, ponies! <laughs> I'm yeah. so loud. <laughs> like, shut up, we're trying yeah. to sleep. So if there was one to be sick on, this was a good one. Um, yep. Yeah. That was a good trip. No, it was fun. What was your. Least favorite part of the trail in, you have a spot where you're like, I don't want to do that again. Oh, um, the first day I was freaked out because we yeah, had. to repack twice on the way. In. Well, oh yeah. <laughs> so that was one thing. Yeah. But the first day before we packed in, I just, I saw how steep the terrain was and how rough it was and there was no trail. And I was really overwhelmed. Like, oh my gosh, how are we going to do this? You know, in, like I said, I, I don't do these pack trips without my dad, you know, usually. So it's like a thing I've done with my dad. So I'm like super comfortable doing it with my dad. Yeah. So this was the first time where you're like throwing your gear out and you're like, well, you're the lead packer. Figure it out. I'm like, oh, it's on me. <laughs> okay. My dad's not here. Here's 47 <laughs> Splendas, 110 yeah. Mints. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Four pounds of uh, Lifesavers. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I did not bring in four pounds of life savers. Thank God you did. Pretty they close. Big <laughs> Pretty close. Okay. Yeah, Christy goes pack light like your sheep. We had to sacrifice a back strap on the way out. Bare <laughs> minimum gear, and you should have seen the crap she packed in. Mm-hmm. I brought life. What else did I pack? <laughs> that was crap besides life savers. All sorts of stuff, Christy. All the stuff. All the stuff. I don't know what I brought, but <clears throat> can't even name anything apart from <laughs> life savers. Punk, <laughs> you brought so much stuff. But I mean, it you had one <laughs> pair of socks and a sleeping sock. What's this? You didn't know what a sleeping sock was. You're oh, like, what's yeah, a sleeping? Yeah, you bought two pairs of socks, two shirts. I had a t-shirt. He had shorts. What's this two garment <laughs> thing? Well, what do you wear when it's eighty out? Shorts, jeans. 
Yeah, well, that's why your legs are white. <laughs> yeah, exactly why they're white. His are white and mine are still hairy. <laughs> Cheers! Ew. All right. Well, I didn't want to use all the hot water last <laughs> night. I was trying okay. to spare it for you but guys. But get, getting back to the packing part, I mean, obviously it was a lot more stress on you because of you taking the lead responsibility yeah. on this trip with well, that. Well, I made one mistake on the way in and I learned from it very quickly. Yeah. We took the tent and we were top packing it. And I Didn't just secure it. I, well, I just set it on the decker rails and we put the top pack over it and through the walker hitch. Mm-hmm. And I saw the tent like sliding and I told Dick, I'm like, this tent is sliding and we repacked it once, right? Yeah. Before the saddle rolled, because it just looked bad. Well, then we come down this big hill and I hear the saddle go, Rrr! and the whole thing is hanging sideways off of Otis and he's just powering down the trail. Well, non-existent trail, but you know what yeah. I mean? Like just do, 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 doesn't even slow down, just power stroking along with a hundred and something pounds of gear hanging off him sideways, just giving her. So I'm like, Nick, we have a problem. <laughs> and then we decided it was a good idea to tie the top pack, the tent and attach it to the panniered so it couldn't move. And then we had zero problems. Mm-hmm. We were we were golden. For, well, no, we did. On the way out, we were. Go- it was so steep and up and down, and Otis had so much weight on. He had pushing 200 pounds, I think. Mm-hmm. And his blanket squirted out the back. Does anybody even know what causes blanket squirt? Like, this is a thing that we've had happen. If you're not a horse person, it's when the saddle blanket squirts out the back from behind the pack saddle. I, we don't know what causes it. It just happens. I think it happens mainly to him, though. <coughs> he, he's really wobbly when he walks because he's so big. Like, his his guts just float around like a big grizzly bear. Like yeah, that. he does yeah. walk like a grizzly. I think that's causes, that's what causes it. Yeah, he's got so much rock mm-hmm. to him. He does rock a lot. Mm-hmm. He, he is a big rocking And animal. the other thing that doesn't help is that he drags whatever he's packing in every bush he can find. That makes the move like makes it move too yeah, and loosens everything. Yeah, I know everything. he's a jerk like that too because he's itchy. I found you the perfect uh, stick now to use on him. <laughs> I found that. I know, but I told you to use it. Yeah, you but wouldn't. you you just said you claimed it. He, I found a spike. You bullshit. found it. Okay. I found that it was the best <coughs> way. To, the best way to use it was to hit it on his forehead. I did not. Yeah, how would you find the shed? I was going pee. Thank <laughs> you. And sometimes you find gold. Okay. Don't be jealous, ridiculous. Nick. <laughs> five yards off a road and there's a spike shed blanket. <laughs> this is how she does it every time. Every yeah. time. <coughs> so that goes. I, I, I have to work. Ten miles and then five <laughs> exactly. more and she goes pee five yards How many yards miles off did I hike? I found yeah. two sheds. Mm-hmm. Which were pretty nice, actually. Yeah. One was walking up to your deer. Mm-hmm. And if, if, if I had been the gentleman I normally am, I would have let you walk first, but I didn't. <laughs> so I found the shed. <laughs> if you'd been the gentleman that you've read about in story yeah. tales. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, I was going to say about the packing, even though you didn't go with your dad on this trip, so you were, you know, taking most of the responsibility, it was good having Nick along that is used to horses and oh, yeah. has been on horse trips. And Well, he's uh, been on a lot of trips with us. Right, that so too. So he knows the program. So he knows the animals yeah. also. And yeah. and then, I mean, I've done some stuff in, in BC and in, in Central Asia with horses where we pack a lot, so... It was amongst fine. amongst all of us, He's got enough amateurs <laughs> around to make it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> figure it out. And if well, nothing else, zip ties and duct tape. Yeah. It always works. You paracord. tighten stuff down. Dude, I, all I can say is, nothing can be too tight when you're packing oh. <laughs> with ropes. Tight, 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 tight. Yep. Tie everything down tight. And the other thing, I think, what could have caused some tight of that. Cinches. Um, some of that <coughs> stuff coming loose on the top peg is because those that rope was brand new. There might be still some stretch no, in no, it. No, 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 no. The problem was that tent's 35 pounds, which my dad's rule of thumb is don't top pack more than 25. And what would happen is that tent, because I didn't I didn't tie it into position on the decker hook across the decker. No, I understand that part. But uh, rails. The it rope's would, brand new. It would slide to one side, and then it's dumping 35 pounds of weight onto one panniered and just, mm-hmm. you know, it doesn't matter how well your packs are balanced. It's, right. it's just rolling them, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so that was that. That was my amateur thing. That was my it was my learning thing. I won't do it again. <laughs> yeah. No, but it it, it yeah. worked out fine. I mean, for us not knowing the country really yeah. after you know further in than three miles that I did on that scouting trip, and um, 
only having a limited amount of time and then for your first pack trip in Wyoming. Yeah. You know, it was smooth. It was really nothing that happened. I don't think I've been on a lot worse with you before. Oh my gosh. (laughs) I'm so lucky that I have such patient animals because Nick has seen my horse get shoved off a cliff. Before. Yeah, brought my horse with it. Yeah, it did. <laughs> uh, we didn't have any of that. That stuff sucker this was time. dying on that one too. He's getting <clears throat> choked to death. His eyes are rolling in the back of his head. <laughs> we told that story on the podcast I did with Robbie. But did you? Was, nice. Like, yeah. Get choked out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but no, we we had no problems. Like Otis, he's such a big bulldozer. Like we're on our way out, and he just quickly just tries to itch his face on my backpack that's attached to my saddle horn, and he takes the backpack. Flips it in the air 10 feet, and the backpack goes flying onto the ground, and my horse doesn't move. Like, I'm lucky that I have animals like that, because there are some horses that would have sent them across the country in a bucking fit, you know? Like, mm-hmm. they, everybody was chill. Like, I got the lead rope wrapped around Otis's legs one time, mm-hmm. and that was di- disaster averted. Um, it's like when you're leading mules up steep and down steep... Or horses, whatever. Too short is bad. Too long is bad. Yeah. Well, that one <laughs> I was lucky because I was right next to him. I was yeah. filming you going by, and I'm like, uh. <laughs> yeah, I had it just a hair, Alert. <laughs> a hair too long for how steep it was. Yeah. But if you have it too short, then they tend to beat up on each other a little bit, you know. Mm-hmm. But no, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> Look at Hank. He's gonna load up. He's like <laughs> ne- ready for the next trip. <laughs> yeah, no, he's he's, <laughs> he's just, just getting turning in the around. trailer. <laughs> <laughs> he's I'm going. out of here, Jack. Mm. See ya. Mm. <laughs> He's just trying to decide where the best groceries are. Mm-hmm. Which they are right in that bucket that he doesn't touch right yeah, now. Yeah, he ate some. He grazed on some hay. Then he went and ate some weeds out here. And then he was just kind of running around doing whatever. <laughs> but all of them are here, healthy. and Nobody got a cinch sore. Nobody got yeah. injured. No. no humans got hurt. <clears throat> that was a good trip. It was a good trip. Yeah. yeah, it was a lot of fun. And it was... Like, only actually a couple of days of hunting. Too that's full. Yeah, that's well, what it was. Well, it's because the write-in out was so... Right. But, yeah. I mean, like, we didn't have much more time for the season. No. In that spot. And it worked out fine. Yeah. You know, it helps that we weren't too picky on what we we're going to shoot. You know, I mean, I had set my goals already before we <laughs> went <laughs> in. Like, but I'm going in there and I'm shooting a forking horn. <laughs> Honestly, that was the hardest deer to probably find is if some <laughs> giant forking horn. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> which we hadn't true. seen him till the last set, day. Yeah, you actually set yeah. your bar higher than most. You know, you find a small four pointer. <laughs> I wouldn't have turned down a one eighty with trash off the sides <laughs> either. You know, but it's the only thing one eighty with trash or a fork and horn. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> no, uh, I didn't set. My, I wasn't even planning on shooting a deer. I was like, Yogi's gonna shoot the deer. I'm gonna shoot an elk, and we did not have any luck on elk. We saw elk. We just didn't get in the right place and we ran out of time mm-hmm. like two, i think it's a good thing two and a half days is <clears throat> man by the time you figure out how you're going to get to them or where they're you know where they're going yeah. to feed and when and where they're, they're coming back yeah. to bed and by the time you figure that out th- the hunt was over yeah. you know and so we just didn't have time they move a lot faster than the deer do oh boy too. i mean they go over two mountain ranges before they bed yeah. you know and you're like okay. that's the tough part about the yeah. country is they have their spots but their spots are too these little pockets mm-hmm. over which is mountains so for us yeah. yeah so you can't be like okay he's feeding here and then he uh-huh. goes over here because you go to that pocket and you're like where'd they well, go that pocket goes up another 400 yards so mm-hmm. is he bedded on this side up here did he go over to the next yeah, one well yeah that's it's that's tough. the point right yeah. we, we didn't know that country enough to figure that out but now we do which is nice for next well, year when we come yeah. back we'll just spend more time in there yeah. unless it's raining or snowing and i'm not going back in there <laughs> So if that's if it happening, dumps rain, we're just going to live there for the next month. a weather forecast that says anything about rain, it's not happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. But it was good. We, I mean, we tagged out on the on the two general deer tags, Yeah. which the season ended two days ago. The season ended the day we tagged out. Yeah. It was perfect. Yeah. And uh, the elk tag you have still runs until the end of the month. So you, you can still do that if you want, which is perfect. And it would have sucked packing an elk out on top of the mule deer. <laughs> out of that hole yeah. we would have had two days of the packing yeah. we would have had to go to the trailer camp camp and then go back in mm-hmm. but that would have i don't know how we would have packed our t- camp out well i guess we would have packed everything out and then everything back in just Ooh. minimal yeah just minimal that would have really been i mean you could have. that would have been a long sachet. the thing, is, the thing <laughs> is you could have done it you know all three pack two deer out uh, one person goes and runs that meat you know to the freezer to pack back in and 
bring the rest out because you can do an elk with two people I mean, and mm-hmm. three and four animals you'd be fine yeah. oh yeah, yeah. No so i mean it would have been possible but it's just it would have been a long <laughs> two who, days who would have been packing back in yogi i would have been walking i know that because i don't get a ride I think that you probably would have been the one going to the freezer. I'm just saying. Why? I'm just saying. I'm playing this mental uh, game out, and you'd have been like, "Oh, you and Nick go back in." He's got to film anyway. Just I'm film. gonna. Why go would to the I said that? I just. Feel Who like did most of the walking? Uh, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so, <coughs> it's just. Why would you send him with the meat to the freezer? I mean, you could have done it. I just don't see that being the way it would go. <laughs> <laughs> I just, just, just don't see it. Mm. It's okay. Yeah, you're you're like Nick. Literally looked at me one day, so I shoot my deer, and Yogi's like, "Okay, Yogi guts it," because we go and do photos. Yogi guts it, processes it. Nick and I walk back to camp. We put saddles on. We ride back to get my deer, put it on Otis. Ride back to camp. Put the meat in the shade, and take saddles off. And we sat down for literally what ten minutes. Yeah, <clears throat> and Yogi's texting me. Where are you? <laughs> What's taking you so long? And I, Nick looks at me and he's like, I don't know, but if I were a paid hunter, I'd want him to be my guide. <laughs> but right now I hate him. Because <laughs> you were like running us into the ground. We're like, ah! <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah, I'd want him to be my guide. Yeah. And stop glassing for 48 hours straight. No. It'd be midnight and a full moon and Yogi'd be like, we can see, let's glass. <laughs> <laughs> I probably would. Yeah. <laughs> that's when they move it's a good in. thing thermals aren't legal because if you could glass with a thermal all night he'd never see I it. love glassing yeah. eh? it sucks when you don't see nothing but when you like we're in country there's animals everywhere yeah. not everywhere but there's a lot of animals those mule deer were not bedding tight no I mean, they no. were in the wide freaking in open. Oregon those things would bury themselves <laughs> yeah. you did not see them but it's no. different terrain right the sagebrush yeah. here wasn't as tall no, either no that's true yeah, yeah. But yeah, and um, obviously there's probably less pressure here hunting in 100%. general on yeah. them. Yeah. So yeah, and he sees his reflection in the water. He's like, "That's a big forked horn. No one's gonna shoot me. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I can do whatever I want. I can do anything." Uh, <laughs> but oh. he didn't know Yogi was coming. <laughs> Every <laughs> Wyoming hunter looked at Yogi's deer and is like, "Think of I'm think good. of the <laughs> events that had to lead to that poor deer to die." Yogi had to meet Christy <laughs> from Europe. You got married. He fucking moves here. <laughs> then you move to Wyoming. You pack all the way in, and there's that goddamn fork and horse sitting there. <laughs> gets whacked. Like, he's the most unlucky deer on the planet. The most unlucky deer. <laughs> we passed a fork and horn in Oregon, and it was almost tempting because it was starting to look pretty good <laughs> yeah. on day eight. You know? No, but he was younger. That yeah, young one? Yeah. Young, you can't yeah. burn eight points on a fork and horn. No, you probably Well, that's shouldn't. the other thing here. I mean, we're going to... Come back we're, every year. We're going to get to do this it's every general, year. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like you're burning, yeah, like you said, eight no, points we're not or four points, points yeah. or whatever. It, yeah. yeah, it was our last morning. And it was an old deer. And like Yogi's, I mean, you haven't shot a lot of animals because you're always guiding people. Mm. So for you, and you're... This is only my third mule deer. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I was so happy for you that you got a buck because, like, I just, I, I want you to have the same opportunities that I have, which is why we moved here in the first place. So to see you get to punch a tag was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. As you know, I wonder when wife. I get to ride too. <laughs> <laughs> it's next year. <laughs> next Can't get year. all the perks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's fun. It was it was a really cool trip, and I mean that we could do it on the same day. Yeah. And then also the last day I see them was pretty awesome. Yeah. I mean, and I love shooting old animals. I don't care about the score too much. You know, that's something people talk about, obviously. But I like shooting old animals. I like character. I like the mass. Your deer is awesome that way. You know, he's got those, the bases with the knobby, pearly stuff. And just big old animals. I like that way more than, like you said, shooting a younger big four-point, you know. Yeah. So. And that was even in Utah last year. I shot at night, or obviously a great deer. But when we were talking about it, I'm like, dude, the last day of season, if I see a young 4x4, I'm not going to shoot it. We're going to go find one of those big old 3x3s three that we'd seen. Yeah. That we'd <laughs> seen. And that was our strategy for mm-hmm. our last yeah. day. Was so you should do. You know, I don't want to go shoot a young 4x4 four four just to get a four-point buck. I want to go get one of those 150-inch 3x3s three that were just mm-hmm. massive. Yeah. And big that was our cool. that was our plan, our, you know, our backup plan on stuff. And But our harvest objective, I feel like um, – from that standpoint on you know what you take and we have to continue on <coughs> the year the freaks kind of it's not the f- it's not freaks but it's more like non-typical stuff for mm-hmm. most people like you shot your antelope there was a 
kind of a goofy freak. freak and then you shot that white tail mm -hmm. total freak on one side yeah big deer and then you shot that oregon buck which just an old wide yeah big deer you know not like big forks or nothing but just <coughs> cool deer biggest one we saw yeah um and then now you take this monster three point that's yeah. like crazy big and, and my <coughs> oregon deer's body wasn't as big as this three point but he was fat like mm -hmm. i've never seen like oh, really? like lard on right. his back oh, wow. this deer didn't have the lard yeah it'd probably that, been running it off already yeah. <laughs> yeah. he was busy but i couldn't believe his neck yeah. like when you walked up to this that three by three like his neck was as big around as my waist and i just it looked like otis's <laughs> neck when he was foundering earlier this year <laughs> otis, did <laughs> <Pretty not. much. laughs> otis did not founder okay he has a but he had a, a weight complex, okay? He can't have He had a swollen biggest. neck this summer. He's, he did. He's big boned, mm -hmm. okay? <laughs> Let's call it that. Let's yeah. call it that. Poor Otis. <laughs> I've heard you use that excuse too, Christy. <laughs> yeah. I'm big boned. <laughs> yes, it's a fact. That's I'm good. built for comfort, like Otis. We're both, <laughs> you know, bulldozer ish, you know? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but that's the cool thing. I mean, we get to do this every year in Wyoming, though. Yeah. And you know whether don't we, move here. It's really windy. Yeah, it's cold and windy. Don't come here. It's okay. so windy though. I mean, you have to put <laughs> up with it the wind. Look at it out here. It's crazy. And the hunting. You can barely sucks. stand <laughs> in the chairs. <laughs> the wind is yeah. gusting. <laughs> the hunting sucks. There you go. <laughs> the hunting sucks. The hunting and the people sucks. are horrible. Rattlesnakes everywhere. Actually, there okay. is a lot of rattlesnakes here. I will. There is a lot of rattlesnakes here, and that is not an acceptable thing. But I just carry a snake gun now. <laughs> Which you didn't on this trip. Well, it's cold. I thought it'd be cold, and it's, it's not. eighty. It's not me. cold. I'm like, it's cold. No, it wasn't cold. <laughs> I don't know. I totally didn't. Uh, actually, the first night we camped out, it was freezing. It cold. was freezing cold. Yeah, that yeah. sucked. Yeah. yeah. And then it warmed up. Yeah. To eighty, and now it's gonna go to snow, snow. tomorrow. Which Welcome it looks like Wyoming. it's coming. Yeah. yeah. It is coming. You can see it in the sky. Mm -hmm. It's getting dark. Yeah. But that's gonna be nice too. Might push some of the elk off the mountain, and we can get to them. I chop, told chop, Yogi, chop, I chop. said, I'm not packing in next week <laughs> in the snow. We don't I'm not doing in. it. I'm not going to pack in with him in the snow. We are not going to do it next week. It's not happening. No, I think we should just hike and hunt. Yeah. Like, it's just like having you to help, no offense, husband, having Nick to help was a, a big help for me, you know, just because you're so good around a horse. Circles back to my wife doesn't trust me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We need Yogi for the walker anyways. He's a lot better walker than I am. <laughs> you mean the walker hitch or the walking part? <laughs> both. Both. <laughs> you sucked at both of us. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, it, it, uh, yeah, it was just really helpful to have Nick and, and you know, just having yeah. an extra set of hands and somebody who's really capable around a horse is, well, yeah. is helpful. When you have of four of them uh -huh. that you're packing and saddling, and it's a lot, you know, to, for one person <clears throat> to manage. That's why they have wranglers on hunts. That's why I said I'm not coming unless your dad comes next year. Yeah, margaritas. That's mainly, yeah, you that's just want margaritas. <laughs> the perk, yeah. One of the perks. <laughs> well, you know, when we have margaritas, Chrissy's going to be useless for the day after. So. I am never <laughs> drinking one of my dad's margaritas again. Oh, no. Two of them suckers, and you'll sleep uh, till noon the next yeah, day. Yeah, and you'll puke. <laughs> you'll puke all morning <laughs> okay, the next morning, well, okay? You'll Some miss people a, can hold their liquor. Nick you'll miss <laughs> all my text messages. Where are you at? We're glassing. Yeah, exactly. Nick, yeah. Nick was so disappointed. So, like, my dad shoots his archery elk this year, and Nick, unfortunately, was not with us. But so I go to celebrate and I have a margarita in camp, a margarita that my dad made. And the next morning I puked, I swear to God, five times. <laughs> I was curled up on the couch with a blanket on, like shivering, like, oh, Wes is taking like blackmail photos of That's me. Good. I was dying. And Nick's like, how come I miss out on all the fun? Yeah, Christy never <laughs> drinks around me. She's sober 24-7 in her life. For one damn time. I know. Well, that's why I'm a terrible drinker. <laughs> like, no, that's mm, horrible. That's funny. My dad is. I told my dad, I'm like, you trying to kill me? My mom's like, you're a lightweight. <laughs> <laughs> we have seven of these every night. <laughs> I have a couple glasses of wine, yeah. a margarita. Yeah. It's fine. Mm, <laughs> Life fine. is good. <laughs> we were totally sober on this trip. Yeah. I didn't that's even bullshit. pack my wine in. Stupid. You'll yeah, never it go is on a pack trip with Christy. <laughs> yeah. I know. Poor Hank. He only had 60 pounds on. You could have probably brought wine. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> on the way in. I forgot. I should have. Yeah, that would have been empty by the time we mm -hmm. went out. 
And the only reason he had 60 pounds on is because he had to pack his own food. Yeah. <laughs> Poor guy. Have a pack mule. Yeah. Well, something. Hey, he's still doing he's pretty good. I mean, a good job. He's yeah. worth it. The t- two trips we've had him on this year, like the one just riding in the summertime and then this one, he's done really good. Yeah, he's, after 26 years, I mean, he's done everything a million mm-hmm. times and it's easy. I wish we've had, this was a sad year. Like we just did not have the time to do stuff with them. Like I'd like to because of our, excuse me, because of our move was just. Like we couldn't explore, we mm-hmm. did, we just didn't have time. It was not enough. Crazy. No, we did a little bit, but not enough. Yeah. But I mean, we still did quite a bit here. You know, for the time we had here with yeah. our busy schedule, it's like you know, try to squeeze in what you can. Yeah. And uh, I think we did good. Yeah, we have one more trip here that potentially could involve donkeys. So we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Depends on where you shoot that elk. If when. When if and when yeah. Mm-hmm. Say a prayer. <laughs> Hopefully it's close to the road. <laughs> Hopefully it's side by side type hunting. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Oh, it's, uh, that is one thing. Like here, it doesn't seem like people really want to put on a lot of effort. So if you're willing to do a little work, it can yeah. you know, have a good reward. Because there's only That's a like half million people in Wyoming compared to Oregon that has four and a half million people. So inevitably there's, you know, fewer people in the mountains. And mm-hmm. it's the same size state roughly, you know. So. But it was the same in Oregon. I mean, we got... Two, three miles off the road into the um, back country. You didn't see anybody. There was a few people in there, but it's like, you know, you yeah. don't have that constant Pressure. side-by-side traffic yeah. everywhere. Right. And then every Pick road you go, there's going to be a camp, you I know? call it so combat hunting when it's yeah. like that. Like We like to get away from people. Yeah, it's nice. And that was the other thing with this trip. <coughs> it wasn't supposed to be like this late, but we only had the two or three uh, last day of season to hunt which was nice because everybody else had kind of peeled off already they either tagged out or Or they were burnt out or burnt out you know they had to go home for work or whatever Mm -hmm. yeah so there's we saw a couple guys on the road and then there was one guy that came out on horses and that was Mm -hmm. it yeah and we didn't have anybody in there Mm -hmm. it was so nice it was nice i like that yeah because you know it's like you say, it's combat hunting. Even in even in the back country, if you find a nice animal, and then let's say you have to leave it for the next day because you can't get to it, you don't know if there's anybody else that saw that animal. Yeah, yeah for sure. You know, so that's. Uh, or if they can shoot farther than you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know. But it, it's nice Which when you get away from people. Which is a genuine concern, you know. Like if, you know, someone can can outperform you that way, it can cost you an animal for sure. It can, but I mean. Woohoo! Woo-hoo! What did we do? We, we killed, killed deer! deer. <laughs> we did. <laughs> ching, ching, ching. Cheers. Oh, yeah. I'm not an alcoholic <laughs> like you guys. Hey, so I have yeah. cherry tea in mine. Thank you and very rum. much. And rum. Yeah, sure. Cherry tea and rum. <laughs> yeah. No, that was that was a good trip. It was fun. Mm-hmm. Couldn't I mean, have done it without the Onyx. I just must say that. Because oh, that's that a helped fact. a lot. They're that like a lot. everything. Yeah. Being able to share maps and waypoints and navigate, yeah. co-navigate, yeah. and everybody be on the same page yeah for uh a link to where we hunted i'll put it in the uh, the description in onyx link, <laughs> yeah so. yeah yeah we'll put the link <laughs> yeah. on our on our route just and d- so dm me dm me and every 50 dollars will get you that pin okay <laughs> and you can go exactly where we just went and you can shoot a fork and orange if okay? you want to <laughs> see christy on the live set of her hunting film <laughs> <laughs> yeah no but that is the thing it is pretty nice and um it was an absolute lifesaver on this one because Nick and I were on the trail, the quote unquote track, whatever. And Yogi's like, hey. Let's not bring this up. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> this puts me under the bus. Uh, you guys are going the wrong way. And he was right. And we wouldn't have, you know, but it's easy out there. It's it's easy because everything looks the same to get off a ridge. You're like, yeah. oh, we thought we were over one more ridge than we actually are. And I mean, that's where your navigation systems are critical. They to help. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. yeah. They help a lot. And now we know where there's human water, where there's livestock stock water, mm-hmm. and, you know. Where there's animals. Where there's animals <laughs> and uh, all kinds of stuff. You know, better yeah. access routes. We'll like, if, if we year. take an access route, because there's no trails, you know, we could make notes in our Onyx and say, hey, don't use this route. Go mm-hmm. another way and yeah. map out an alternate way yeah. while we were in there to just kind of buff out some of the layers of pain mm-hmm. next time we go in. Yeah. And time. Save us time. So, Yeah. yeah. It was yeah, awesome. That was, was awesome. Good trip. And if you guys are new to Onyx, use code WILD20 at your online checkout, 
and you can save 20% on your Elite membership. Boom! There you go. Wild 20. That's a wrap. <laughs> That's a wrap. <laughs> yeah. Thank you guys for joining us for this episode of the Wild Uncut Podcast. I'm your host, Christy Titus, husband yogi, bestie Nick Allen. Stella. Dang right. Yep. We'll see you all next time. Thank you for listening to the Wild and Uncut podcast. If you would like to hear more, be sure to subscribe to my Pursue the Wild digital series on YouTube and follow me at Christy Titus on Facebook and Instagram.